Now, let's look at the Vishla's neck and body. The neck should be strong, smooth, and muscular. It's moderately long, arched, and has no dewlap. This dog has a good neck with proper length and arch. Although you'll seldom see a dog with a neck that's too long in this breed, a short neck like this one is not desirable. And here's a dog with too much loose skin on the neck, forming a dewlap. This not only detracts from the dog's appearance, but can get caught on thorns and brambles in the field. The neck should broaden nicely into shoulders which are moderately laid back, as seen here. This ensures proper balance with the hindquarters. The body is strong and well-proportioned with a short back. The top line is slightly rounded over the loin to the set-on of the tail. On this dog, the rounding begins before the loin, which is incorrect. And here, we see a dip in the top line. This dog has a good top line with only a slight rounding over the loin. And this dog has the proper top line as well as the correct short tuck-up under the loin. This tuck-up begins too soon and rises too sharply. The Vishla's tail should be set on just below the level of the croup. It's thicker at the root and is docked one-third off. This dog has a good tail. You can see that it is properly carried here, at or near horizontal. This is a gay tail, which is incorrect. Correct tail length, seen here, reaches the back of the stifle joint. This tail is too short. An undocked tail is faulty. The chest should be moderately broad and deep, and the ribs should be well sprung. Proper chest depth and length of ribbing are essential for effective lung function while the dog is working in the field. This dog is lacking in both width and depth of chest. This too prominent forechest is also incorrect. Four quarters are characterized by proportionately long and wide shoulder blades, sloping moderately back and set fairly close at the top. The reach of the forequarters depends on the relatively wide shoulder blades and upper arms of about the same length as the shoulder blades, as seen here. The back of the elbow should fall on a line dropped from the top of the shoulder blades. These shoulder blades are too straight. This could severely affect the dog's running ability. The forelegs are straight and muscular with close-set elbows, like this. The feet are cat-like round and compact, with toes close. Nails are brown and short, while the pads are thick and tough. Dew claws are to be removed on front and rear feet. Hair feet are faulty. Properly constructed feet are obviously crucial in the field. Splayed toes or feet which are not properly arched can be a handicap while the dog is working. These pasterns are weak, a serious detriment to a working field dog. The rear drive so necessary for this hard-working breed must come from strongly muscled, well-developed thighs. The stifles and hocks are moderately angulated, in balance with the moderately laid-back shoulders. You can see in this rear view that the hocks are straight. They're well let down and parallel to each other. This dog shows a definite imbalance in hindquarters. His second thigh is too long. This bitch is out of balance because she has too much rear angulation for her front. Any imbalance between front and rear end result in a lack of efficiency. Cow hocks or sickle hocks are faulty. This lovely aged bitch shows the proper balanced angulation.